Hey guys, for those of you that don't know who we are, my name is Anastasia and this is my husband. My name is Chris. Uh, today we are going to be talking to you guys about a dream that I had in the year of 2012. And um, the encounters that I have had prior to and after the dream. So, um, would you like to lead us in a word of prayer? Before we get started, right, let's follow here. Dear God, we thank you for blessing the life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for how you've covered us under your blood, God. And now, God, as we come to this time of sharing, we ask that you would clear the airways and clear, open our eyes and our ear gates to hear what it is that you would have for us to learn tonight. And God, we just ask that you would uh, take this word that we would share tonight, these experience that we would share tonight, and let it drop a seed into the words and the hearts of your people, God, that they might come to know you better, know you clearly, and to touch you. And God, we just thank you for this opportunity, and we bless your name for this experience right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, blessings to each and every one of you that's viewing this video right now. Um, I'm asking God to add a blessing to each and every one of your lives, and I pray that you uh, do find what it is that you're looking for um, coming to this video. I'm going to allow God to have his way. Um, well, prior to the dream, in uh, 2012, I was going through a lot. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. Um, I actually was in a state of depression, and I was just coming out of it. And um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you that has experienced um, depression before. Um, but there was this woman of God. Let's start with that. There was this woman of God um, that came to one of the church services that we were having. Um, and uh, she was actually taking up an offering. She said that I dare any of you that um, believe to come and sow a seed. So I was trusting y'all and I was believing that uh, God was just going to do something special. I wasn't looking for any particular blessings or anything like that, but I just I just believed that he was pulling on me to come sow a seed. So um I didn't have any money on me cash wise. And I'm not even sure why I didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I knew I had service that night, but I did have two pennies in my purse. And I went up there and I sold just that. And I gave it with a cheerful heart. Because we all know that God loves a cheerful yes, giver. Um so when I went to go sow the seed, the woman of God, um, she said, well, she said, because you've done that thing, she said, God said he is going to do it for you. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like the, the enemy closed my ear, like he just placed an earplug in there because I couldn't hear nothing else that the woman of God was saying. And I was like, I don't get it, you know what I mean, because I really couldn't hear anything. So I went to my seed, and I just was rejoicing, and you know, to my surprise, I just believed something totally different. I thought she was talking about something else, but she wasn't. Um, so that particular night, I, I went to sleep. And the thing about God, we know that um, the God speaketh to us. He speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet, man, we, we perceive not. He speaketh to us in a dream and in a vision of the night. You know, when deep sleep fall upon us, um, in the slumberings of the bed, and then, somebody said then, then, then he sealeth the instructions in our ear. Mm. Um, so this particular night I went to sleep, and I experienced Jesus for the very, very, very first time. Mm. And um, in this dream, he came down, and he had on a white robe, and I could not see his feet at all. I know that his hair was long. It was about to hair. And um, he wasn't walking. He was gliding. Mm. And everyone there, you know how the word of God said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess? Absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. We weren't bowing down far as on our knees go. We were flat on our stomach. Wow. Yeah, we were on our face. And everybody that had been dealing with any type of infirmity or anything of, of that nature, we were all healed. And uh, he started teaching us about demons. First, he said that there was something about the oil. He told us to not ever, 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 ever touch a person that's demon-possessed without the oil. Mm. 
And as he was doing that, he said, because the, um, if you touch a person that's demon possessed and you don't have oil, he said that the spirits are transferable. It can transfer from one to the other. You know, he can actually come into you. You lay hands on a person in that uh, way. So, um, you know, I was like, well, I was interested in what he want, what he was going to say next. So he was, um, showing us this young girl. She looked to be about seven or eight years old and she had a demon and God said do any of you know what's wrong with this girl and I'm like that girl got a demon you know I just I didn't shout it out loud or anything like that I was like she got a demon and in the dream God began to weep. he began to cry and and it was so 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 powerful like I cannot express to you the love that God has for each and every one of us like he loves us so so much he loves us so much and um he says she is demon possessed and he cast out the spirit of the young lady the young girl the seven year old eight year old he cast out the spirit and i began i went to him and i said well god i said you know i just bought some oil the other day and i don't know if, <laughs> if this is uh you know if i can be able to use this oil and he cracked it on the ground and he began to use it, anointing people with it. Wow. Yeah, and um, I went to him again because trust and believe, girl, when Jesus, or male, when Jesus are in your dream, you know, anything that you feel like you want to ask, trust and believe, you, you're you going to ask. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, God, I said, I got another thing that I, I want to ask you. Of course, he, he reads thoughts. He knows exactly what you want to ask mm -hmm. before you even come to him. I said, well, God, I, I want that Donnie McClurkin type tone. I said, you know, I'm tired of that. La, da, 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 da. I, I didn't want that. I, didn't, I wanted a language. Why Donnie McClurkin, though? Because Donnie McClurkin, um, it's just something about when he spoke in tongues, uh -huh. he flows. Uh, yes. Like that, that, that Donnie I that wanted flow. that language. Oh, yeah, that yeah. I just yeah. wanted that. You didn't want to steal it, though. No, I didn't want it. I didn't want to steal it. Oh, I, I wanted my own. Oh, you wanted your own. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Own. But you wanted the flow. like. Yeah, I just wanted the flow. Right. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so at this time, I was pregnant. I was pregnant with the baby. And um, God told me in the dream, he said, well, it's not until the baby come out. He said, because it has to come from the bottom, mm -hmm. the pit of the stomach. And he said, it's going to flow like rivers of living water. And he breathed into my mouth. Y'all, and I cannot even, I, I, I can't make this stuff up. But when he breathed into my mouth, it's like I, it, it was like I was on clouds. It was like I was on clouds. And um, I felt like air was coming through my ears. It was powerful. It was powerful. And all of a sudden, I went to him again, the last time in his dream. Mm. And I said, God, I want to ask you another question. And he looked at me. I didn't say not one mumbling word. And he said, that thing that you want to ask me mm -hmm. is very personal. And he had one of my aunts to prepare the office. And he used wisdom because he saw that there were people standing around. And he didn't want to discuss that in front of people. Mm. God is good, y'all. So there were some other things that went on, you know, in the dream. And I'm not going to say that it didn't have meaning because every part of a dream has meaning. Definitely. Believe it or not. But I'm not going to go into that part about it because I want to stay here. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want us to focus on this part. But y'all, just to experience a dream with Jesus, and it was amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. it was amazing. And sometimes, you know, God will show us things. And um, we feel like at that time is the time to release it. Mm -hmm. And he is saying, no, it's not time. It's mm -hmm. not time. You know, it's um, it's been 2012 since I had that dream. And it's 2017 now. And I'm just able, I'm just able to release the dream. Wow. Yeah, so we're going to get into some of the scriptures, though, um, concerning this dream. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, the first, first thing first. I know that God is a healer. And when his presence is there, period, I mean, we're, we're just going to be healed. That, that's just who he is. Mm -hmm. But um, I focus a lot on the part of the dream when he was saying that there is something about the oil. He said for us to not touch a person that's demon possessed mm -hmm. without the oil because the spirits are transferable. Mm -hmm. So there are scripture um, references 
that um, that backs up everything that he stated in the dream. And the first one we're going to talk about tonight um, is going to be Mark. Mark 6 and 13. 6, 13. Yeah, Mark 6 and 13 on uh, the King James Version. And all the scriptures we'll be reading tonight will be out of the King James Version. So uh, Mark 6 and 13 reads, And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. So we do know that there is something special about this all because the Word of God teaches about the all. Um, the second thing that I want to focus on is how the child who had a demon hmm. was in this dream. And the child was seven or eight years old. And, you know, some people don't believe that children can be possessed with demons. But they can. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I think when it comes to children, most people see them as innocent. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, we as parents, you know, we have children, so we as parents sometimes we don't realize when we open the door right. for children to be exposed to demons and demonic activity. And then we don't know what we've done until most of the time until the demon starts manifesting and we're trying to figure out, well, what's going on with I'm our kids, right? To tell you. Yeah, that's crazy. So this, um, the scripture, Luke, Right, Luke mm -hmm. nine, Luke, Luke nine thirty eight through forty two. That's, that's that's it. Yeah, that's it. So okay, so let me read it for you. Uh, and behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, "Master, I beseech thee, mm -hmm. look upon my son, for he is mine only child. Mm. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out." Mm. And it teareth him that he foameth again, and bruising him, hardly departeth from him. And I besought that thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answered, saying, O faithless and perverse generation, mm -hmm. how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down. And tear him. Mm. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. So as we can see, um, you know, looking in, in the book of Luke, uh, 938 to 42, mm -hmm. we see that there was a child that was, was possessed with a demon. Mm -hmm. uh,